we are here and let's see if uh, Instagram has come on. I guess it'll come on in a second. If you are in Periscope and or YouTube, write me a comment so I can see you in the chat. And oh, and Instagram is, has come on. Lisa and Christina. Brussy Charlie, good morning to you too, my friend, and welcome. <laughs> Tally, Jared Allen, you know how rad it is, guys, to see all the same faces every morning? This is, it is exciting. It is so much fun. It's like, it's like we're, 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 <laughs> we're taking on the world. From DC, what up, Grump? Right on, guys. So, we have lots and lots and lots and lots to talk about. Um, <laughs> I, don't where to, I don't know where to start. However, I did promise you guys. Oh, no. Periscope is acting glitchy. Let me try that again. Uh, let's see. It's, sorry about that, guys. We'll see what we got on. Blood, sweat, and silks. How are you doing this morning? Joel Mackey. How you doing, buddy? All right. That seemed to be what better. All right. So, guys, I'm grabbing a cold brew now and joining. Well, I wish to be uh, having a cold brew. So, guys, I started this um, talking yesterday about a toolkit for self-analysis, and I gave you rule number one. So I will give you rule number two in a bit, uh, but I will finish that out today. I, I hate doing things where I've broken them up between days because it's, it's difficult to follow, and my apologies. But uh, I'm still <laughs> winging as, as I go. Cold brew coffee, I hear you, blood sweat. Gotcha. Yes. Well, we all got some coffee. Animal has some coffee as well. So, uh, first, I just wanted to mention, if you guys haven't checked it out yet, uh, check out the podcast this week. We've interviewed Dan Heath, the author of Thinking Upstream. It was a great book. And with everything that is going on right now, it, it has shed some light on how to think upstream and what problems could arise in the future. And it's, a, it's about how to focus your attention on problems before, before they come. And I found, it, I found the book quite refreshing and, and good. Uh, you know, for me as an entrepreneur, I, you look at things, you try to get ahead of problems so that you can see them coming. So thinking upstream isn't a, a new concept. However, he has laid out some good tools in, in how to think upstream. For an entrepreneur, for somebody who wants to build a life around them that is uh, the one that you're willing to fight for every day, a life that inspires and encourage you to get out there, you need to think ahead. And uh, LA Jen, I see you came over here. Is it is it glitchy over in Periscope? Uh, it looked a little funny today. But in order to build a life worth fighting for, you have to be able to look upstream because you want to be proactive with your life rather than reactive. When you are living in a reactive manner, you're constantly dealing things as they land up on your lap. There is no way to build a future for yourself if that is the position that you've put yourself in. And to be able to look towards the future, to look upstream, to look at problems before they arise, you first need to be able to take responsibility for my post abandoned. I got you. Well, thank you anyway. Um, you need to be able to look upstream and you have to be the one that's going to take responsibility for looking upstream because 
Here's how this happens. When you're in a business, when you're working or collaborating with other people, of course you want to be a high value person. Of course you want to take responsibility for the work that you're doing. And of course you want to elevate those who are around you for them to do a better job. But here's where the lines get blurry. Upon taking these responsibilities, we, we tend to back off of the ones that we've, that we've set up systems for previously. And as long as the systems are running fine, there is no reason to put thought or effort towards making them more efficient. When the reality is, over time, those systems will become antiquated and out of date. When those systems become antiquated and out of date, that is when we start to see problems arise. When those problems arise, then you start to be reactive to them. In order to get ahead, you have to ask the questions why to some of these old antiquated systems to see if any of them can be updated. The rule for in human nature, if things are running fine, then why ask questions? If it's not broke, don't fix it. That's just a human tendency. However, when those things break, then we have to become reactive and deal with the problems. So it's important to do an overhaul once in a while where you can ask yourself, why? So you can ask yourself, are these running efficiently? Do these need to be updated? Are they antiquated? You know, this is why, yeah, absolutely, you gotta get out of that mindset. So Gary here says, get out of the mindset of not broke, don't fix it. Absolutely. You need to be asking yourself why so that these, can, if, uh, these that, so these processes can be run efficiently. Now, here's the issue, and, and it's so easy to see in our own country, the antiquated institutions and systems that have been running with no problems, but now that everything has been rocked to the core with a global pandemic, that we start to ask ourselves, do we really need this? Do we really need that? Has this been functioning to the best of its abilities? So. It's only when these problems arise that we start to look around and start to think, hey, are some of these institutions, are some of these processes overblown? Are they, are they flushed out? Are they, are they running efficiently? It's at this point that we're starting to look into the future and thinking what we need and don't need. So, if you're interested in upstream thinking, check out the new interview with Dan Heath, the author of Upstream. I believe I have it. It is right here. Uh, it's a great book. Uh, Dan has also written Decisive on how to make decisions. He's also written The Power of Moments, which is one of AJ's favorite books. Uh, so Dan's an accomplished writer. It's a great book. Check out that podcast. That's our new one out that came out this week. Hey, and if you have checked it out, give me some hearts. Give me some thumbs up. Let me know that you guys checked it out. That'll, that'll, that'll certainly uh, boost my mood. All right. We should reshape from this. We're going to have... LA Jim, we're going to have to reshape from this because all the antiquated, overblown systems and institutions have been exposed. Talk about, we were forced to think upstream. Say there's some hearts, so everyone's been checking out the episode. Great. Um, so, here, uh, so that was one of the things I wanted to get out of the way. The other thing I wanted to get out of the way is also, you guys know that the reason I've been putting these together every day Look at those hearts, thanks guys. Um, was to also document my thoughts through this process of this global pandemic that is going on. And Jen and I were talking yesterday and 
I'm drinking Rack Coffee right here. Random Act of Kindness Coffee. All right. So I have been documenting this and, and this archiving these on YouTube uh, has been an opportunity for me to go back and watch the psychological experiment that has been thrust upon all of us, my reaction in real time. And yesterday, here in Los Angeles, we had gotten in some new news that, that we can expect LA County to be shut down for another three months. And then, on top of that, uh, a lot of us had gotten warnings that now we need, if we are outside, that we need to be wearing masks. Now, I don't know, guys. I'm getting the data and I'm seeing the reports like all of you. Is there something that I am missing? Is there something that I don't know about that just makes wearing a mask if you're outside of your house? You can't run in a mask. That's right. Is there, is, there some, is there some data that I am missing that is now suggesting that, that it's transmissible at all times and, and you need to be wearing a mask if you're outdoors? What is, I'm utterly baffled and utterly confused. And there are a lot of other states that are putting together plans to slowly open up and as I had mentioned multiple times, absolutely fearborn. I have stated it multiple times that I am that I want a logical, thought-out plan that the people can see here in Los Angeles of an, an opening schedule. Every time we get we move forward, we're taking two steps back. Arizona's opening up. You guys in Georgia, that's blood and sweat. I know you guys are are slowly opening up. And here's the thing about it. I want everybody to be safe. I want everyone to be respectful of others and, and their wishes to be safe. And... And, and I want to see a, a plan that slowly moves us towards our goal of being open. What I'm totally confused for another three months of, of shelter in place. And if I leave the house to wear a mask, even if I'm running, jogging, or I'm just walking through a neighborhood, this is, this is going to cause a lot of issues. And I have a lot of problems with it. And I'm, I have, I'm glad that I have this opportunity to, uh, to, to, to document this as well, because it's driving me nuts. But that's what I have issues with aerial studios suggesting people wear masks in the air. No way. I'm asthmatic. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I wouldn't want you blacking out while you're 20 feet in the air either. One of our aerial, aerial stars here. Yes, absolutely. Be safe in the stores. Be protected. Darth Vader. All right. So with that, guys, I will get into our rule number two of self-analysis. And, and we'll put this together. And then I'll, I'll try to put, the, put a nice bow on this. So yesterday I had mentioned it. The rule number one is the truth. The truth at any price, including the price of your life, that is the rule. Why is this rule delivered to, to that extreme? Because I had laid out an argument why everybody that you know in life, including people who love you, will lie to you. They don't do it maliciously. They just have a different lens in which they view the world. Therefore, the the reality that they're going to interpret will always be different from yours. So therefore, we, get, we break down the argument that yes, everyone that you know, including people will, who love you, are going to lie to you, not maliciously. They just, their truth to them will always be subjective to their filter to their lens. 
This is why birds to a feather. This is why you feel better around some people's worldview than you do other people. Have you witnessed the polarization politically that a lot of us in the world are facing right now? That's because everyone now <clears throat> has been given enough information to make up their own reality with the facts as they see them. They have put together a, a reality that they have constructed for them with that, with that lens. Now, that lens is going to be determined and colored by your temperament. And so this is why we tend to flock together around people who have that same world view and who are able to, that, that you are able to vibe with so that your facts, your truths, your realities match up. This allows you to feel safe. When it comes to Maslow's, hierarchy and needs after the, the basics of eating and shelter, your safety is next step up. The more people that you have around you who share your reality, who share your filter of what is going on, your worldview, the more safe you feel because you have others that you can depend on to back you up. This is important as we are social animals. So we're going to conjugate, we're going to, we're going to be put, putting ourselves together with other like-minded individuals. Now, somebody had posted up about uh, the, the echo chamber. Absolutely, there is going to be an echo chamber effect to that. There's always going to be pluses and minuses to everything that you do. If we are social animals and we're going to look to conjugate and collect into groups that share the same worldview, well, we also want to make sure that we are not so fixed in our thinking that we can't let in other ideas to the, our marketplace to see if there are ideas that make to give us a better worldview, to better give us a better filter that makes life better for us. This is how this works. Is this the absolute dark side of life? Ah, that question I don't, I don't get. My screen is black. Oh, I'm sorry, Brussel Charlie. I, I, don't, I don't understand why your screen is black. <coughs> All right. So, that is rule number one. We are going to put together a, a worldview for ourselves. <clears throat> we understand it's going to be different from others. So we are going to conjugate with, with others that we can relate to because their worldview is much the same. We are also living in a time where each and every one of us can put together our own worldview or you can be a simp, as the kids call it, and just don the worldview that the media will hand to you. We're all running on this sort of script that has been laid out for us. You get to choose which one that you're going to run on. You can also meticulously put it together. When you get into belief structures and ideas, this is why I love philosophy, you are able to pick and choose what works best for you. There is a, there is a, a path of discovery of ideas and they're all documented through history. That's what makes philosophy so rad. Now, now that we understand rule number one, and I'm going to state it again, the truth at any price, including the price of your life, now we understand rule number one. Rule number two for the self-analysis guidelines is 
Look at the things underneath your nose as if you've never seen them before and proceed from there. That is self-analysis rule number two. I'm going to state it again. Look at the things underneath your nose as if you've never seen them before and proceed from there. Now, what does that mean? That means that if rule number one is true, which is the truth at any price, including the price of your life, because everyone will lie to you, even people who love you, then rule number two is a must because rule number two allows you to scrutinize everything that you've been told in order to disseminate it to whether it belongs in your worldview filter or not. We all do this, whether you know it or not. So it is best for you to understand how this mechanism works so that you can best use it to your, your advantage rather than not understanding how it works and then be doomed to be pushed around by it. Because remember, as I said yesterday, we're all running on chimp tech right? C-H-I-M-P dash T-E-C-H, chimp tech. Chimp tech is as only as good as we mod it out to be. We get a baseline chimp tech uh, mechanism that, uh, that allows us to go out, which is based on survival, procreation. That is it. Chimp tech has a high ceiling. We need to educate. We need to continue modding out the chimp tech that we get, we have gotten. This is why understanding how these mechanisms work allow us to use them to our advantage rather than not understanding it and then being pushed around by it. Because the, our, our programmed systems are being manipulated by it. Remember, we're going to be moved around and persuaded and influenced first emotionally well before our logic is able to catch up to it. So rule number two to the guidelines of self-analysis is, is look at the things underneath your nose as if you've never seen them before and proceed from there. Now, now that you know that Everyone's going to lie to you, even people who love you, because they're, they're just going to discern information different than you. It's going to be differently processed. Therefore, it's going to fit in their worldview differently. Then you need to set in systems that will allow you to scrutinize everything, all, everything that is coming in. Now, remember that... I also pointed out to you that not only will everyone lie to you, including people who love you, the one person who lies to you on a daily basis all the time is yourself. Therefore, your thought processes must be scrutinized constantly. I just woke up, Johnny. You are an interesting character. Well, thank you very much. So now, now that you understand that even you will lie to yourself on a daily basis all the time, those thoughts are the most, the most to be scrutinized. Why? Because you're in, you're in a constant conversation with yourself of, of moving through reality. And it, it is, and you are being influenced emotionally through it this whole time. This is why so much money goes into advertising. Do you realize the amount of advertising and the psychology that goes on behind it? It basically fuels this whole economy because as human beings were able to be influenced so easily emotionally that everything is set up to sell in that way. Think about... Uh, my, the the mind guys like Dan Daryl is it Darren Brown, the mentalist. 
All they are doing is hitting emotional triggers to get you to come up with a thought. Now, when they shoot that stuff, they got to go through lots and lots of people to get the desired effect. However, when you're looking at a mass population, you know that, um, that out of that mass, a majority of them, we can even claw that back a little bit, that a portion of them, a lot, and the bigger the crowd, the larger the portion are going to end up at the desired result. This is, this is marketing 101, guys. So the two rules, the truth at any price, including the price of your life, because everyone that you know will lie to you, including yourself. Rule number two, is look at the things underneath your nose as if you've never seen them before. <laughs> what, what is that? It's, uh, it's very hard to turn it off, especially if someone is unaware of the buttons. Absolutely. I'm glad you saw the, the parallels between this and what Scott was talking about, because I've been talking about this for 15 years. And if you want a good book on this, check out The Art of Possibility. It is, it is, uh, that book put, laid out this argument really well for me. Oh, sorry about that. Where were we, where were we at? So then you are stuck scrutinizing. You need to be able to scrutinize everything because you have to disseminate whether or not it fits into your worldview. Now, in a human being, nature wise with chip tech, your most important need outside of eating and clothing and shelter is going to be your safety. So your first basic need, when it comes in, when it comes into your worldview, you, the, your first thought is, does this make me more safe or not? How do things, how do thoughts, how does these worldviews, these ideas, allow you to feel safe? Well, you have to understand that the, the story that you tell yourself about the world around you is contingent on data fitting the story, okay? You have a story and the data that is coming in either fits with that story or it doesn't fit with that story. If the data doesn't fit with that story, your chimp tech tells you to disregard it. The data that fits with your story, your natural inclination is to strengthen the story. This is where you, as a human being, need to rise above your chimp tech and be able to change the story when the data doesn't fit. This is called a growth mindset. If you have a fixed mindset, then the data that is coming in that contradicts these stories gets thrown out. Therefore, you cannot update your worldview. Therefore, your utility of this worldview slowly becomes antiquated, out of date, and inefficient. Boom. So, this is why you need to be open to the idea of strengthening your worldview with better data. And it's okay to change that worldview as you receive more data that might contradict or strengthens the picture you have drawn for yourself. Remember, your worldview is as only as good as the data that supports it. This is why people gravitate towards news sources that back up their story, their world view, and disregard others. Every one of you have been in a conversation with somebody who is close to you where you have gave them information that that contradicted their worldview. Some people will either update it 
or others will disregard the, the new information and and will double down on their world view. Because here's what happens. If you hand somebody too much data that contradicts their worldview, their story begins to fall apart. Once their story begins to fall apart, you don't feel very safe. This is why people hold on to this story. Ugh, guys, all right. Thank you. <laughs> Rusty Charlie, your president. Well, there's a lot of people who are guilty of having a fixed mindset. You can argue that he's certainly one of them. All right, guys, I'm go I gotta go. Thank you all for joining me today. I will be back tomorrow, 8.30 a.m. Listen, if you have questions, you have topics that you want me to speak about, then Write me, send us a message. I'll be happy to speak about anything. We've been doing this stuff for 15 years. Now, if you enjoyed what I had to say today and you want to know more, check out the Art of Charms Communication Accelerator. It has all the best from our online classes and live training programs and the best from our expert guests over the last 15 years. The link is in the link tree. If you're on Periscope, it's going to be in the Twitter bio. And if you're in YouTube, it's going to be in the description. I will see you guys tomorrow. Cheers.